Okay, today's class is dedicated Be'ezer Hashem Yisbarech by Rabbi Moshe Goldman Le'elu Nishmas in loving memory of Chaya Etel Esther Bas Reb Avram Chaim Olav HaShalom Olav HaShalom Zechrena Levracha The devoted administrator of the Chabad Cheder in Toronto who recently passed away Chaya Etel Esther Bas Avram Chaim Tehei Nishmas Atzura B'Tzrer HaChaim May she remain an eternal source of blessing and inspiration to her family, the community, and all of the Jewish people. And all of the students she touched, and thank you very, very much. Okay, we're in the middle of the Maimer, Purim Tavshin Tezayin, Purim 1956, which begins with the Maimer Chazal to understand, Lahavin to understand, the Maimer Chazal, what the Medrash says, that all the holidays, all the Mayadim are going to be nullified, excluding Purim. And about Yom Kippur, there were two opinions in the Medrash. If it was like Purim or not Yom Kippur, or not like Purim, would it be nullified or not be nullified? He went into a long discussion about what that means. How could you say that any mitzvah will be nullified when Mashiach comes? Explained it at length, which we discussed in the first class and in the second class. You can listen to a replay if you would like on double speed or even triple speed. That works. I don't take it personal, even if you tell me. Because if it was me listening to it, you know, Madalach Sani Lechavrach Savid. So uh, after discussing that, we got into a discussion trying to understand what is the revelation of godliness on Purim, because the main point was that there's going to be a revelation when Mashiach comes, that Legabi that, the revelation of all the holidays, the consciousness of the holidays will be like a candle in the middle of daytime, in the middle of daylight. Shraga betiara, my ahani, the Gemara says. And yet Purim will stand out. In other words, it will be a revelation of godliness that even, that is so greater than the other Yom Tevim that even when Mashiach comes, the Medrash says it's not going to be eclipsed. It's not going to be covered over. It's not going to be uh, something that doesn't occupy space and doesn't stand out. So in order to understand this, he started to explain in chapter 2 that all of the other Yabim Tevim were created when the Jewish people were in the desert, or even Hanukkah when they were in the Beis HaMikdash. But the other, the other Yabim Tevim were times that the Jewish people were connected to their earth, they're connected to their organic place. All the Yabim Tevim, Pesach, Shavu, Sukkot, are connected to agriculture. And the agriculture of Eretz Yisrael, the seasons of Eretz Yisrael. Pesach and Shavuos and Sukkot. In other words, it represents primarily a time when the Jewish people are rooted. We spoke a lot about being planted in your, in your roots. Purim, the Gemara says, we don't say halal on Purim. Why? Because because we're servants of Achashvedish. And even after the miracle, they remain servants. They remain subjects of Achashvedish. And in halal, you say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, avde Hashem, veloy avde Achashvedish. In other words, Purim represents the Yom Tov of Galus. It was created in exile, at the time of exile, about a story that happened in exile. Do that's the Kriyas is Uwalayla, does it ain't of an entfers. So Lloyd Diana Entfers Octas the Mili. You're right, Enachanami. There's three there's taka three answers in Gemara. <laughs> there's an Afkamin there, that's the Nafkamin. Mm-hmm. Even like that explanation, that Kriyasa Zuhalel, one of the answers is the Megillah, that's the Halal. And the Me'idi says if you don't have a Megillah, you should say Halal on, on Punim. <laughs> a big Kiddush. L'chayda, they're not arguing if Avda Dachashvedish. They're just explaining that even if Avda Dachashvedish, you could still say halal. L'chayda, it's like Osa I would, I would assume so. They're not arguing on the Metzius was Avda Dachashvedish. It's just like a machlekes of Metzius of Jews Avda. Alamai, that halal you could say, even then. L'chayda, that's the that's the Havana. Very good. Why don't you skip the pasuk Halu Avda Hashem? So obviously, it's not the pasuk that was bothering the Gemara. It's the halal. It's expressed in this pasuk. There's something about halal. To be able to say halal, you have to be a free man or a free woman. 
You have to be able not to be an Avdei Achashverosh. In order to understand all this, he explains that the Jewish people have two names. Knesset Yisrael is sometimes called Rachel. You remember, and sometimes it's called Esther. Rachel is Yifas Toya v'Yifas Mara. Rachel is the epitome of Yoifi, of beauty. And both types of beauty, Toyar and Mara. Toyar, the Mepharshim say, represents the organs, each one, and its symmetry with the other ones. And Mara is the light on the face. Chachmas Adam, Toyar, pun of the countenance, what a person's face looks like. You look at a face and say, it's a beautiful face. The face has such light, such grace to it. Toyar is actually like the structure of the guf. It could be a structure of the guf. That is, it's, 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 it's aesthetically appealing in terms of symmetry, in terms of synchronization. That's what the Mepharshim say, the difference of Toyer and Mara. You have Yifas Toyer, Yifas Mara. Esther, the Gemara says, Fakert. Esther, Yirakroikus Hoy. So the Gemara says in Maseches Megillah, Esther, Yirakroikus Hoy. El Shechut Shol Chesed Moshechala. In other words, Esther, they point out that it was a Gewaldike Chidosh that Achashverosh took to her because naturally, she had a greenish or, or yellowish color. What does all this mean? It's a spiritual, it's a metaphor. Rachel represents the state of what's called Hayafa Banashim in Tanakh, in Sheashim Hayafa Banashim. It's the state of the Jewish people in the time of the Beis Amikdash. Purim represents the state of Esther from the word concealment. Which Esther Haya doesn't have that element of Hayafa Banashim. And on this it says in Shri Hashirim, Im Loi Seidila, Hayafa Banashim, Tsi Uri, as Gdi Yosayach, Al Mishkin Asarayim. The woman asks, Where can I find you? Where can I find the shepherd? As they're parting ways, I want to be able to always come back and find you. Remember, the shepherds were not in one place. You always had to go to a new place with the sheep. And the whole Shri Hashirim is about the meeting. Of Anila Doidi Vidoidi Li, the two people who are so connected to each other, and she's afraid she's going to lose him. So he answers him, If you don't know the most beautiful of women, if you don't know where to go, you don't know where to find me. Go and shepherd your goats, your little goats, your baby sheep and goats, called Gdi Yisayich, Al Mishkana Sarayim, on the Mishkanas, are the dwelling posts of the shepherds. So the Rebbe Taitches, Im Loi Seidi Lachayafa Banashim, is a time that you don't know. Im Loi Seidi Lachayafa Banashim. What does it mean you don't know? That the element of Yafa Banashim, the Yafi of Yafas Tayyav, Yafas Mana, the beauty, the spiritual beauty we're talking about, is not known by you. It's not experienced by you. And that explains the word Lach, Im Loi Seidi Lachayafa Banashim. You don't know about your own. You're not in tune with your own yoifi, with your own beauty, with your own wholeness. So then, there's an advice, Siri is the Esayich. And he says, that represents the time of Esther. That's why the Gemara emphasizes that Esther, not like Rachel. Esther was Yerakroi Kesaisa. Even though Esther was a descendant of Rachel. That's the Chiddush, right? Because Esther came from Shaul HaMelech. And Shaul HaMelech came from Shevet Binyamin. And Binyamin was the second son of Yosef. So Esther is really a descent. Esther is, comes from Rachel. The al Sheikh says, it says in the Megillah, Mordechai told Esther, If you don't go into the king, you and your father's house will be lost. What does he want from their father's house? What does he want their father's house? So the, uh, Rabbeinu Moshe al Sheikh in his commentary on Megillah, I think that's where I saw it, he says something fascinating. He says that Esther was a granddaughter of Shaul HaMelech. Shaul was given a commandment to obliterate the Hamas of the time, called Amalek, and obliterate completely. Because if you don't obliterate, a year later or ten years later, you have to deal with it again. And more people die. Shaul didn't listen. And as a result of that night... Agog had relations, the Medrash says, and Haman came out from that, Haman Agog. So Mordechai said, basically, it's basically life is coming around again. Your grandfather allowed Haman to exist, and you were sent into the palace to finish what your grandfather didn't finish. So if not, the entire shlichus of your base avich will be lost. 
So Esther essentially came from Rachel. But Rachel represents Yifas Tari, Yifas Mara. Esther represents a stage of Mloi Seidi Lachayafa Banash. The beauty is concealed. On this, the Rebbe says, from Loi Seidi Lach, you transform it, and that creates the Yomtev of Ad the Loyada. The Loi Seidi Lach, the not knowing, is metamorphosized into Ad the Loyada. To explain what all this means, he started to explain what Yifas Tari, Yifas Mara means. It says in Svarim, it says in Chsidis that Yifas Toya, Yifas Mara, Represents two types of beauty. And Beruchni, spiritually, it's mitzvahs essay and mitzvahs loisus. The mitzvahs essay, the 248 positive mitzvahs, correspond to the 248 evarim, the 248 ramach evarim in the person's body. And that's connected to your toya, when every limb is in its perfect structure and in symmetry to the other limbs, that makes your toya. So you have every mitzvah. You not only have every mitzvah, you have the yafei toya. What's your toya? The hiskalalos, the symmetry, the integration. And he explained when it says when you do one mitzvah, you put it from another mitzvah. So the, explanation, the deeper explanation is, not because you're doing something good, you're not wasting your time. Because every mitzvah includes all the other mitzvahs. So it's not just an abtur, it's a derech avoida. That when I'm doing one mitzvah, I'm really doing all the other mitzvahs, which means in avoida, on an emotional level, it means that the person is not stuck in doing the mitzvah only because it fits with my nature and disposition. Some mitzvahs happen to work well with my issues. <laughs> this mitzvah happens to work well. If I'm a people's pleaser, if I'm a people pleaser, there's a lot of mitzvahs that could kaksach it because they allow me to please people. If I'm a stubborn guy, there's mitzvahs I could kaksach it because it works for my stubbornness. If I don't like people, there's a lot of mitzvahs I could kaksach it because I don't like people. It's not avoidus Hashem, it's avoidus atzmi, I'm serving myself. It happens to be I find the mitzvah that works well with my ego or with my insecurity or with my coping mechanisms or with my wounds or with my stuff. Ha'isig mitzvah patim in a mitzvah is the pshat that you're connecting to the divine in the mitzvah. And b'meila, it's connected to all the other mitzvahs, even mitzvahs that are of an opposite nature. Because Hashem transcends any particular kav, any particular disposition and therefore includes all of them. So Oisim Mitzvah Patim and Mitzvah is a derech avoida. It's not when you have two mitzvahs and you're already doing one mitzvah. You know, the Mishnah brings a bracha, said a levaya. Those who are carrying the mitzvah are potter from Krishna. I, this man Krishna is going to pass soon. And they didn't read, but they're potter. I, they're not going to read Krishna. You're right, they're Oisim Mitzvah Patim and Mitzvah. They weren't wasting their time. They were doing a mitzvah. The vart is that in every mitzvah you have every other mitzvah. That's what you're taya. You don't only have all the, all the organs. I do all the mitzvahs, I have a checklist. There's a symmetry, there's an inclusivity. In other words, in every mitzvah, you never get detached from any other mitzvah because you always remain with a pshittis, with an undefined relationship that is beyond the particular nature. You hear that eichet of the vart. Even as you're involved in the form, you always remain connected to the formless so that the form doesn't swallow you up and keep you stuck in the ego of the form. You had a biyakav yutoifus? We'll soon get there. We're now talking Rachel. What, what beauty is. And that's why the world stands on three things and each of the three, there are three pillars. It's a tripod. It's not one leg versus another leg. And that's called his scalalus, integration. And that's what beauty is. Beauty is always connected with symmetry and integration. Not, one, not only one voice, but many voices. Not one, uh, one instrument, but many instruments. Not one color, but many colors. Is the symphonic energy. It's what they call it in English, synergy. Synergy means when two energies come together, it creates, Dr. Rebbe calls it, it creates a light that's larger than the sum, than the sum of the details. Not just you and me, so we have double of me. It's more than double. There's a magic that's created from achdos, from symmetry. It's a, it's, it's a magic. Huh? called synergy. It's a koyach of a minion, right? The minion, it's not just nine people and you had another person. There's a, there's a new cheftzev in Ikdash di b'seich b'nei Yisrael. Okay, it's a separate sugi. The same is true in the mitzvah's loisasa. Yefei mara. Mara is connected to the blood. The blood flows through the gidim, the sinews. There's 365 gidim that are counted. General ones, connected Shasa Loisasa. So that's your Fei Mara is the Loisasa. Abstaining from all the negative mitzvahs. Here too. 
It's not that I'm stuck in one form and one fashion. There's a hiskalalus. There's an inclusivity. That's basically what's in the... Now we go further. Ubeprati yosir. 122. To get more specific, he could have said in the Pasuk, Yifas Toyar Umara. She's beautiful in Tayar and Mara. It says, you fast Tayar, you fast Mara. That means there's a different type of beauty for Tayar and there's a different type of beauty for, for Mara. In other words, the integration that creates beauty and perfection for Tayar, which is the, the, the fulfillment of the 248 mitzvah sase, is different than the Yifast and the beauty, than the integration that creates the beauty and the perfection in Mara, which represents the 365 Mitzvah Slaysa said what we abstain from, what we protect ourselves from. For you even back to Machilik by Mitzvah Sesi and Mitzvah Slaysa. To understand this, one has to see the difference between the Mitzvah Sesi and Mitzvah Slaysa. He says, uh, interesting, the Hine on Urayim, Shenekel Yoyser Lassus has called her Mitzvah Sashitziva Avaya, the Koshe Yoyser Lehishomer Oisitinzich, Mishasam Mitzvah Slaysa says, Shaloy Lamal is Nitnach Geben Taivasa Vietzra. It's, e- it's easier for a person to do the mitzvahs. You do it, then you're finished. It's easier then to protect yourself than to create a boundary that the shasa mitzvahs loisus uh, are not part of my life. The mitzvah, I do the mitzvah, and I daven. I put on tefillin, I gave tzitzdaka, I made kiddush on Shabbos, I ate matzah, I did shayfa. It's avada, a person has to want to do it, and it's a commitment, no question. But to, to prevent yourself from shasa loisus, uh, this a person is, it's diff, more difficult than the mitzvah sasa. Um izem bovan. She bishvil shvidah mitzvah, shasa mitzvah sasa, sasa tzarech liya sam shachim and makim el yin Whenever something is more difficult, just like physically, if something is more difficult, you have to pick up a more difficult weight, you have to tune in to a deeper level of strength. You have to, you have to work harder. You have to go into a, 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 a deeper place. You have to have a better core, a better foundation. Push, push in, in physical exercise, you know. <laughs> your quad, your abs have to be more in, you have to have more power in order to be able to exercise this type of strength. The same is true spiritually. When something is harder, he calls it, you need a hamshachim imakim el yinyaisi. You need to tap in to a deeper or a higher place within yourself, a loftier place in order to be able to access an energy that can help you withstand that which is more difficult. The Indians and Masim Lamavur become a Makaymas, Shiramach with Vasasinim Shachim Easis Vavke, Vishasam with Vislasis and Mashachim Easis Yutke. This is consistent with what it's explained in different places. In Kabbalah and Chsidis, Yudke Vavke. So Vavke, the last two letters of Hashem's name, are the source of Mitzvah Sese. And Yudke is the source of Mitzvah Slaysis. You would think fakert. You would think mitzvah essay, you're doing something. You're connecting. Mitzvah lysa says just passive. You just aren't doing anything. What's mitzvah lysa? What well, you're not allowed to do. I'm not allowed to lie. I'm not allowed to steal. I'm not allowed to cheat. I'm not allowed to deceive. I'm not allowed to gossip. I'm not allowed to slander. Whatever it is. Machshava, dibur, maisa. So it's not. Mitzvah essay is actually engagement, it's active. Called Shevaz. Sh- it's it's Kumvase, uh, as the Gemara puts it. You, you're going to do something. Mitzvah is a Shevaltase, you're just sitting passively. But in Kabbalah it says not like that. It says Mitzvah's essay of Vavke and Mitzvah's Lysis are Yutke. So what Hashem told Moshe in Parsha Shmois, Zeshmi la Oilam, Vezez Zichri la Dervadar. This is my name and this is my memory, how they're going to remember me in every generation. Zeshmi la Oilam, Vezez Zichri la Dervadar. And that's what David Amalek says in Tehillim, we say in the morning. Mm. Um, uh, <laughs> I forgot, but Hashem Shimcha La'aylam, Hashem Zichri Chaladoy Vadoy. That's based on the Pasuk and Shmois. Right? He uses that Pasuk and he puts it in Tehillim. Hashem Shimcha La'aylam. So it says in Tikkun Zoya, and it's brought in Zoya. That Shmi, 
together with Yutke is Ramach, 248. And Zichri together with Vovke is 365. Stimmt? No, the other way. The other way, sorry. Yeah, I mixed up. Shmi, Shmi together with Yutke is 365. Because Shmi is, Shin Mem is 340. And another Yud is 350. And you add Yud and He is 15. So it's 365, that's Mitzvah Slices. Huh? And Zichri, Zayin, Chaf, Reish, Yud together with 11 is, 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 is Ramach 248. So Shmi, which is higher than Zichri, it says, Zeshmi la'olam, v'zeh zichri l'doi v'doi. There's a mime in, in Lekut HaToyed Pkude about this last week, that Shmi, the Gemara says in Pesachim, is la'olam, it's concealed, because we don't say Yudke Vovke. The Gemara says, Loi kashem shani nikhta vani nikra. In Mesechus Pesachim, the way I'm pronounced is not the way I'm written. We write out Yudke Vovke in the Sefer Torah, but how do you say it? We don't say Yud and He and Vov and He. We say Adna, Alav Dalad Nun Yud. So the way I'm written and the way I'm pronounced is not the same, it's a different name. Zeshmi la'olam is la'olam. It's concealed. V'zezichri, the way you actually say it, pronounce it, l'doi v'doi is different. So zichri is what's revealed. It's a lower level than shmi. Shmi remains la'olam. And the Tikkun Zoya says, shmi together with yutke is shasa. Zichri together with vovke is ramach. But it's very consistent. Yeah. That, you, that to, to be careful with mitzvah slices, you have to tune into yutke, which is higher than vovke. That's what he's saying here. In other words, you need the kayach of Yutke, which is higher than Vavke, in order to be able to fully fulfill mitzvah sleisasa. Mm. You could see it in a lot of things. Mm. Mitzvah essay represents things you do. Mitzvah sleisasa represents not what you do, but who you are. <laughs> you understand the difference? <laughs> it's much harder. You give me a checklist. Yeah. Let's say you're married, yeah? So you have chiyuvim and the ksuva. You got to pay the credit cards, okay? <laughs> got to pay the mortgage. But it's a list of what you do. You do this, you do that. It's a checklist. Okay, I finish the day. I'm a good husband. <laughs> Mitzvah's license represents something else. Mitzvah's license represents who you are. Because Mitzvah's license, uh, it's 24 7, it's a state of mind. Verbistu. It's the boundaries you create, who you belong to and who you don't belong to. Your typhus, it's a much deeper union. And it's much harder. <laughs> I did, I did, I did, I did. Was willst du? I did. Right? Yeah. It's, it's the boundaries. It's where, where, where I won't, what, what I won't step away from and what I won't step into. So that requires, that's like, you're right, there's also mitzvahs tmidiyas and there are mitzvahs essay. The Sefer Achinuch and the Hagdama, there's six mitzvahs that are constant. He says it's like the six Ari Miklat, Sheish Ari Miklat Yana Lachem. So over there, it's like not a checklist. <laughs> Emunah, Achdus Hashem, Avaz Hashem, Yiris Hashem. It's not a checklist. Huh? Yeah. 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 That's why mitzvahs essay are connected to vavkei leisus at yudke. For lachen yesh gam chilik bayif na iskalus vayevi mitzvahs essay yifas toil and mitzvahs leisus say yifas mada. For hainu she beshvil a iskalus that amach mitzvahs essay must speak am shachas she al derech am shachas am meichan she pelus iskalus ba midus bchinas vavkei. Am nam beshvil lifel ein a iskalus gam be bchinas yudke a sheder she shas am mitzvahs leisus she winy na meichan tzrichali es am shachim imakim elyon yosim am meichan. So based on this, the yoifi is different. Your fast toyer is different than your fast mara. What creates the yoifi in toyer is not what creates the yoifi in mara. 
and he explains it here in the Lushen, uh, in the Lushen of Chassidus. He says, Vav K represents the Midas generally. Vav, Yud, is generally Chachma, and He is Bina. And Vav are the six Midas, Chesed, Gvur, Teferis, Netzach, Chayd, Yisair. And then the last He is the implementation, what's called Malchus. So Vav K is connected to Mitzvah Sese. So you need to create the Hiskalalus of all the Midas. There's Mitzvah Sese connected to Chesed, Gvur, Teferis, Netzach, Chayd, Yisair, like we explained. And it shouldn't be that I'm stuck in the nature that I feel comfortable now in, in my comfort zone. But I should have his skalalus. So that means bringing in the meichen, which creates his skalalus in the middas. Bringing in the higher awareness, which allows the middas to be able to work together with each other, to be integrated. When a person is in a state of deeper consciousness and awareness, so then they could see what, nature, what they're doing because of their stuck. What's a coping mechanism? What's a structural trap? And therefore, I don't remain stuck in it. So that's the hiskalalus, the yoifi that's created for toya. But in order to create the yoifi in yutke, the hiskalalus in yutke, in chachmabin, and now I have to go to a higher place, to the source of yutke. And that's what he says, you have to go to a place that's higher than meichen. It's known as the midis, which are higher than meichen. It says in Kabbalah, in Zoyar, za ba'atika achid v'talya. Za is a rampant. The small face, which represents the six midas, it's unified and and hang it's the tully, it's tully, it's suspended, it hangs. It depends on what's called atik, which is kesser, which is higher than meichen. The point is that usually we speak about midas below meichen, but really the midas are rooted in higher than meichen. Our primal emotions are deeper than our intelligence, even though midas come out through awareness, but the root of midas is higher. So to create a hiskalalus in yutke, you need to go to a place. That's even higher than Yudke, which simply means in order to be able to reach regulation in our Moichin, we have to deal with our primal, our primal drives and sources, because without that, the Moichin are a victim to Atik. So it's a really very, very deep stuff what he's saying. In other words, when my Moichin are in, are in an integrated place, he called to say when a person is regulated, they call it if you're in your prefrontal rather than you're in your limbic brain, you're in amygdala, you can actually regulate your body. You can regulate your midas. You can regulate your midas. There's a, it's known today as the vagus nerve, the polyvagal theory, vagus nerve, when you, when, you, when, you can, when you could communicate that integration to the body through the nervous system, so there's a regulation, and then there could be his skalalus amidus. And then I'm not stuck in my coping mechanism, but I can expand. And that's the idea of Oisegu Mitzvah, Potem and Mitzvah. That every mitzvah includes all the other mitzvahs. Because you're connecting to the divine, which is not stuck in a particular kaf. But that's not going to help if my moichen are stuck. If my moichen and my awareness is also functioning through the lens of a coping mechanism. So now you need to go to the shayrish of the middas. The shayrish of the middas is your primal, primal stuff that are often unconscious. That's called keser. So beyond chachm, it's the crown. It's called the crown because the crown is not part of the body. It's on top of the head. What does that mean, al-pichsidus? It's on top of the head. It's on top of the conscious. It's super conscious. If you want to call it subconscious, super conscious. It's called koichas, we can learn about koichas makifim, right? There's koichas pnim, there's koichas makifim. Zo is batika achid vitalia. What's that? Zo ba atika is pnim isa keser. Zah, the Midas, they're lower than Moichin, but really they're connected to Atik, which is the Pnimius. This is the most primal place, and that's the only place you'll be able to, to help the Moichin. So this is very, very powerful, because the Moichin need healing sometimes. <laughs> no, no, I was bringing in the vagus nerve as the different things we know today about to help with regulation of the nervous system and the mana. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a fellow, Stephen Porges. I did an interview with him. He actually comes from the Chafetz Chaim's family. Stephen Porges. He's a professor. He's a brilliant... Yeah, he's from the Chafetz Chaim's family. He told me on the interview. You could see the interview. It was interesting. He explained to me his theory. Poly <laughs> it's very interesting. Polyvagal theory. I didn't mean to derail you, but it's so interesting because you can link the... the going to Atik. Yeah. Through something physical. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, everything is connected to the physical. Mipsari echzelika, right? The Pasuk says, for my flesh I perceive God. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's extremely, extremely central in the structure of the person. And when we speak about mayach shalit alalev, right? Mayach shalit the 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 mayach shalit. So people think shalit means 
It rules like a dictator, like a tyrant. You tell yourself what to feel, and you're going to feel. doesn't work. Try. If I'm feeling anxious, yeah? Don't feel anxious, you idiot. I'm the boss. It says in Tanya, He brings from Zoya. So people think Shalot means, yeah? You, bring, you have a dictator, the Maya. He tells the Lev exactly what to do. Try, try doing it next time you're anxious. <laughs> or next time you're having a fit. It doesn't work. Fakert. You know what happens, yeah? It gets much worse. <laughs> yeah. Mayach Shalot Lev is a very deep Indian. Mayach Shalot Lev means it's like a child is crying. The last thing you do is your baby... Stop crying, baby! Cry, baby! Cry, baby! Grow up! <laughs> that what you do with a baby crying. If you do that, one thing I can tell you, this baby ain't grow, is never growing up. <laughs> the baby will be 50-year-old, still a baby, because it's waiting for permission to be a baby. Meichen are like parents. Parents, their job is not to make sure the babies are quiet, that they never cry. It's to be able to help regulate the child. Show the child that there's safety. Mommy is here. Tati is here. There's safety. And if you're crying because of an emergency, there's something really, really dangerous, we're going to be the ones to call for help. But maybe it's not. Maybe you're just a little hungry, so let's nurse you. Maybe the diaper has to be changed. Maybe you hurt your finger. You know, if your four-year-old hurt his finger and seems, call Atzala. You don't say, stop bothering me, I'm busy on the computer. That's cruelty. But you also don't call out Sala right away. What do you do? You check out the finger. Maybe we need a kiss. Maybe we need a band-aid. Ice cream always helps. Not always, but ice cream with arnica. Usually, uh, it's Begamatria Mashiach. And what do you do? You calm the baby down. You hold the baby. That's what Moich Shalt Lalev means. It says in Tanya, Moich are the parents and Lev are the children. You don't scream at an emotion. You don't tell an emotion, get out of my system, you shaita, you little baby, grow up. We sometimes think we can do that. It's a, it's a litzanas. You have to feel it. Like so, so somebody told me, uh, Mr. Lamb said, uh, the therapy, so he told somebody in therapy, uh, he said, the person says, can't I just let go? Can I just, can't I just let go of this emotion? He said, you could, but in order to let go of something, you first have to hold it. <laughs> you can't let go. Can I let go of this, of this, of this uh, tissue box if I don't hold it? How do I let go? <laughs> now I could let go. Holding it, you have to hold it. You have to hold the baby so the baby could calm down and then he could let go. Is that typhus what I'm saying? Moich shalt lalev means that moichin could be like parents that come into the room and say, oh wow, you're scared. You're, you're anxious. I'm here with you. You don't, you don't judge the baby. The worst thing you can do to a child is start judging your child and then tell your husband, tell your wife, we have such a stupid baby here. <laughs> Are all babies as ridiculous as this? I'm completely abandoning the role of a parent. I'm creating a baby. I'm creating a situation where this baby is completely isolated. The last thing is you, you don't judge a child. That's with emo You don't judge your emotions. You start judging them. What happens? They just retreat into isolation. And you know what happens? They become more intense. Moyach shat lalev means I step in like a loving parent. And I listen to the emotion. And I examine. I'm not afraid of holding it. And you know what happens when you hold it? You can let go. Not maybe right away. You may have to hold it for a while. <laughs> the baby is used to being thrown away fast, so she's not going to let go so fast. So you may have to hold it for a while. <laughs> Especially if my whole life I threw away the baby, she's not just going to let go so fast, my baby, my emotion. But emotions are children. Sometimes the emotion is saying something very real. Yeah, call out Yeah, call out Sometimes the emotions are just imagining there's a crisis because things are being triggered. Okay, I'm with you. But don't judge it and don't scream at it. And you know what? You don't have to get in a spell from it. You're a parent. You're a parent. Don't let the baby run the house. See, people think Moich Shalt Lalev is this thing of repression, like you destroy your, your emotions and then you're a healthy person. And what do you see? Such people are sometimes the most angry. They have the most pent-up emotions because they're busy with shalit, shalit, shalit. Like a dictator, the emotions don't go anywhere. They control them completely. And when they get angry, the Eibush is a lopit. And what happened to the Merch Shalt Lalev? 
It's like dictatorship. Dictatorships, you know, you go to North Korea. Somebody told me, North Korea is a beautiful country. Everything is beside them and <laughs> When you go to countries of dictatorships, right? Yeah, it's not a problem. <laughs> there's no, uh, if there's opposition, you're shot. That's fine. There's no opposition. Everything is with a seder. Shalit is very positive. Shalit means there's a parent in the home. A baby wants to, that to know there's a parent in the home. The worst thing is Tati leaves, Mommy leaves for a chasana, and the baby has to take responsibility for the little baby. The fact that you know there's a parent in the home who's there, who's going to step in, who's not affected by all of this. But what happens if the parent is oh so in trauma? So how could you be there for the baby when you yourself are going crazy? So now you have to go to your parents. But your parents may be in Oilama Emes, physically or conceptually. Or they may be out for lunch, which is Oichan Oilama Emes. Meaning they're out. So you have to go to your own parent. You have to go to Atik. You always have to go to Atik because your parents can't be you and you can't be your parents. That's Pshat, what he's saying here. So now the Midas have to go not to the Moichen, the Moichen, you have to go to the place that's higher than Moichen. Zabatik Achid Vitalia. And those are the primal, primal drives in a person which are the source of the conscious Midas that we manifest. So the point here is that the Yoifi in Mara, which is Yudke, requires, the Hiskalalus requires a deeper source. Like we said before, that in Avoida, observing mitzvah slices uh, is a higher avoid that needs a deeper is us, and that's why it's connected to yutke and that's why it says twice you fast over you fast mara it says it says in svarim the alter rebbe says in lekuda teira and the vilna gon also writes it in his svarim that there's different the moishul and a melech umalchusai berotzen kiblu aleya malchus is rotzen a moishul Umalchusay bakoil mashala could be dictator, a dictator, a marshal. It's a different, different relationship. A melech you have to choose. If the nation didn't choose him willingly, it's not called malchus. It's called uh, he's, a, he's a bully. He's a bully. He hijacked the crown. That's the difference of melech and marshal. But here we're not getting into this nikkud. Here we're getting into the nikkud. It's a shalit meaning there's somebody in control. Huh? Unto the Shalot al we say in the Brich Shmei. Unto Shalot al Yosef says it was a Shalot. In other words, it was somebody in responsible. Somebody, there's somebody responsible in the house. You know, you come into an office, is there anybody who runs this office? No. Talk to, uh, to, talk to artificial intelligence. There's someone responsible. And that's the idea of the Mayach Shalot al And, and it, it, it's, it's essential for life because... The baby may be screaming. The baby may be having a tantrum. The baby may be very, very scared. And the mayach could come in and say, I'm with you. But don't worry, there's no li- lion in the room. There's no lion in the room. It's, you're fine. We don't have to call 911. I know you're scared. I'm not judging you. Empathy. But there's a parent in the room. You see, that combination is what people don't get off. And they think it's one or the other extreme. They're afraid that if you talk about emotions, you're going to become an immoral, promiscuous, narcissistic nutjob. So why don't you repress emotions like I did? Put one foot ahead of another foot. Make believe you're feeling when you're not feeling or you're just angry. And everything will be good. No. So you go to the other extreme. What's the other extreme? Every emotion becomes Melech Balcham Lachem HaKadosh Baruch There's some people, they worship emotion. I have an emotion... Oh, really? You decided to leave your wife and seven kids to go to New Zealand? Go do it for three years. Go meditate in New Zealand and come back to yourself. Because you had an emotion. You don't worship an emotion like Melech Malcham Lachem HaKadosh Baruch It's an emotion. I don't worship the two-year-old who's screaming, Call Atzala, the world is coming to an end. You don't do that. <laughs> Compassion, empathy, attunement, and now parenting. Parenting skills. Same is true with emotions. You understand? For this, the moichen have to be regulated. If the moichen are not regulated, there's no iskalalos in the middas. The middas go crazy. Chesed is screaming. Vuda is screaming. The moichen can create regulation in the middas. What does it mean regulation in the middas? They can give a message that sof kol sof, the middas, can start trusting you. 
even before they trust me, I can guide them what we're going to do, what we're not going to do. We're not going to go break the windows of this guy. We're not going to punch him in the nose at the moment. Not because I'm repressing you, but because we got this. We got this. Because we want, we, we want to be happy, we want to be productive, we want to do the right thing, we want to remain in alignment. That's Pshat Mayach Shalit Alalef. So I have a taiva to something, I want to eat something, I want to say something. Mayach Shalit Alalef means I don't have to surrender to the instinct that I'm having, knowing that this instinct is a coping mechanism, and I don't want to live in coping mechanisms, I want to live in my infinite power. But sometimes my Mayachin are also r- r- very, very damaged. That's what happens. My awareness is already operating through a lens of uh, post, let's say, uh, exact class of post-traumatic stress disorder, right? A person has it. Or different things that are much more subtle, more benign. But that's the way I think about things. So that's how I interpret everything. So now my moichen need help. So now you'll sit down with me and you'll explain to me that this is not what your wife means. This has nothing to do with explanations. My moichen are damaged. Or to put it this way, my amygdala is, is, is turned on 23 hours a day. <laughs> Anything you say, it goes on as an alarm system. So what, what, I can't even think straight. So now we have to go to a much deeper place. Zaba tikachet v'talia. I'll call upon them, so that's the yifei toyar v'yifei mada. Tu inyanam of yifei. You toifus what we're talking about here? You missed a good piece. You missed a good piece. <laughs> no, when you watch it, you won't be able to give comments. And you won't be able to give proofs from physics that I was right. <laughs> so this concludes the understanding what is Hayafe Banashim? What does it mean to be able to know that you're Yafa Banashim and to be able to live that way? There's a Shlemus, there's a beauty both in Ramach Mitzvah Sessish and that's the structure of a body. If a body only has organs and limbs and bones, it's Gavaldic. The skeletal structure is Gavaldic, but without the circulatory system and all of the arteries and the veins and the vessels for the blood, there's no life. So it's a combination. What takes functionality of body is always a combination of things. It's not one or the other. And that's the idea of Zaysa Teira Adam. Teira Yiddish is a mach mitzvah mitzvah It's the relationships I'm engaged in and in that which I'm not engaged in. And that's equally important. There's what I connect to and there's what, I di- what I'm not connected to. And they're both important. And one could sometimes be much harder than the other, as we said. So that's Prat Hayafa. In every relationship, there is the positivity of the relationship, and there is what such a relationship requires in order to be maintained and to grow what we stay away from, what this relationship is careful from. People don't realize how important that is, right? I, I said the other day, Mekudeshes is positive, and then it's also Asra La Kula Al It's an Isr. There's the, there's the connection. But in order for us to be connected, there's what we're not connected to. In other words, the boundaries we create that don't allow us to step out of that connection. Simple language, it means if somebody's busy, <laughs> you'll forgive my metaphors here, if somebody is busy flirting, <coughs> right? They may not be over uh, clearly, right? They're not nizir in the loisus. I'm not, I'm not talking about saying good Shabbos. When somebody's in a flirtatious place, there's something in his relationship that's missing and he's looking for it somewhere else so it's not good for him and it's not good for the other person. And nobody knows this, only his soul and God. Because he deludes himself, I'm just a social person. You're not a social person, you're miserable in your marriage. <laughs> you're a social person, that's true. <laughs> but your marriage is missing something. Your marriage is missing something, you're busy flirting. What are you flirting for? I'm, I'm saying these are in Yanim, you understand? It's not, in the, it's not so clear, clear cut, but a person knows there's something missing in the connection, in the, in the what we call in the, in the intimate connection. It's subtle. So I look for it here, 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 here. I can't find it here, I go there. This is things that people don't even talk about, because what, I don't go to clubs, Thursday night I'm in the base medrash, you're not going to catch me here, well, what am I, I'm flirting a little bit. 
But for a sensitive neshama, that's pshat, that a good relationship also has boundaries. Because when a person goes away from those distractions, now I'm challenged to find it where I'm supposed to find it. It's not being said with any judgment, because I know some situations are difficult and people are, are looking for validation and looking for a little fun and looking for a little connection. But I'm just highlighting what's Pshat Hayafa Banashem. Hayafa Banashem means that there is a Yafei Toyev Yafas Mara. The person's structure, both in Mitzvah Sesya and Mitzvah Sesya, in their daily schedule, is not just under control, but it's beautiful. Vizel Gam, Shayafa Banashem, who begamatri other Haman. It's brought in Sifri Chsidis that Hayafe Banoshim is the same gematria like Arur Haman. What's the connection? Cursed is Haman. You know how much, how much Hayafe Banoshim is? You have a math- mathematician here? I think it's 502. How much is Arur Haman? Two reishes is 400, right? 200, 400. 400 and Nun is 450, 490, 495. And then another seven. So how much is 495 and seven? 502. 490, 495 and seven, 502. What's the connection of Hayafa Banashim to Arur Haman? So it's a gematria. The Klal in Kabbalah, when there's a gematria, it's not this number, this number, let's make a speech about it. It's because they're connected, therefore it comes out in numbers. The gematria is just the outer man. It doesn't start because the gematria. It starts because when you understand the inner connection. By people who are into gematria, sometimes it's just a psach, nacha gematria, nacha gematria. Yankel and, and Zelda, they say Shevabrach said, Yankel and Zelda, the gematria miserable. I mean, the uh, gematria happy. You know those Shevabrach speeches? <laughs> Finally, it's gefunna gematria. Yeah, when they get into the first fight, let's see how much that gematria is going to help. Hey, how could you fight with me at the Shevabrach? Yeah? Chaim, Ze, Chaim Shmedel said that our gematria is ultimate bliss and peace for eternity. Shekayach. Go talk to my Vegas nerve. <laughs> Tell him the gematria. Tell my coping mechanism the gematria. A gematria is the pshat that be'etzim is a connection. It comes out in different ways. One of the ways it can come out, I'll pitay this in a gematria. What's the connection with other Haman? Haman means Haman is cursed. It's a way of living. It's a consciousness. This is a curse. This is what mitzvah loisasa means. This is not shayach to me. Because this is a curse for my life. That's not Arur. Arur Haman is an avoida. That's the avoid of Hayofa Banoshim. Because part of Hayofa, you fate toyar, is shasa mitzvah loisasa. We know Arur Haman and Baruch Mardechai are the same gematria, 502. That's why it says you should get drunk and put them until you don't know the difference. What's said You don't know the difference. Why these two things? So some of Farshim bring because it's the same numerical value. When you get so drunk that you can't do your mathematics anymore, then we know that it's put him. <laughs> al it means when you get so into a state of consciousness that you're not busy with figuring things out mathematically, <laughs> then, then you're good. Adalayada. That's going to be him. Loisedi lach hayafa banoshim. But we're not there yet. We're not at the loisedi lach yet. We're still with the hayafa banoshim. Im loisedi lach hayafa banoshim. So, Arur Haman is the consciousness that this is cursed. Baruch Mardechai is the consciousness that this is blessed. Generally, this is Shasam Mitzvah's This is the 365 negative things a Jew stays away from and the 248 positive things. So that's the gematria of Hayafa Banoshim. Arur Haman and Baruch Mardukha. You fei Toyar, but you fei Mara. You fei Mara is Arur Haman. And because it's Mitzvah's Lysis, and you fei Toyar is Baruch Mardukha. Vigzao gam Shayafa Banoshim, ube gematria tof kuv beis, shazao misper shnei chaye yavis. And here you see, Hayafa Banoshim is 502. That's the combined lifespans of all the three of us. Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. Avram lived 175 years. Yitzhak lived 180 years. So 180 and 175 is how much? 355. Now you have Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu lived 147 years. So together with Yaakov, you have 502. So you take Avram's life, Yitzhak's life, Yaakov's life, you have Hayafa Banashim. 
So it says, by Sarah, Avram married Sarah. Yadaiti ki yifas maraot. She's yifas mara. By Rivka it says, toivas mara. Yitzchak married Rivka. And Rachel it says, yifas toiv yifas mara. She's even more. By her it says both. And by her son Yosef also. Because that's the concept of Hayafa Banosha. The others themselves represented that. And the wife, their wives brought, brought that out even more. And that's what they represented as well. That's Hayafa Banosha. My son told me the other day a story that he saw that a Yid came to the Tzamech Tzedek, the grandson of the Balatanya, and he said that uh, he wants to give tzedakah, but his wife is extremely stingy, and she doesn't let him give any tzedakah. What should he do? She's pinch. Huh? It happens in therapy. Also, it happens. He pin she pinches every penny. She says, <laughs> I guess you have to be the Tzamech Tzedek to say this. Tzamech Tzedek says like this. State in Svarim, it says in Kabbalah, in Chesedus, the Ish is Yud, and the Ish is Hey. The Gemara says, Ish, I said Kabbalah, it says in Gemara, in Saita, Daf Yud Zayin, Ish vi Isha, Zachu Shechin Eshriya Beneyem, right? When a man and a woman are Zaycha, the Shechin is between them. So the Gemara says, the Rav says, Ish is Ish Yud, and Ish is Ish Hey. When they're Zachu, when they're refined, Zachu is refined, and they have a schuz, then Shechin Eshriya Beneyem, you have Yud, and you have Hey, so you have Hashem's name. Like we learned before, you day, and it's mitzvah slice, it's mitzvah slice, because it's the bound, the boundaries they create. So you have ash yud and ash hay. So Hashem's fire comes together. It's a beautiful fire. When loizachu, so the shechina leaves. So you don't have yud, you don't have hay. You're left with ash. <laughs> you're left with a fire. Loizachu. So what do we see from here? That the man is Yud and the woman is He. And this is connected to Chachma and Bina. The man is the seed of life. He gives the seed. And the woman takes the seed, conceives it, and develops it into an embryo and Be'ez Hashem into a fetus and into a child. That's Bina. Bina takes the Nekud of Chachma. But without Bina, it's just elusive. It's nebulous. It's, it's like a, it's a seed of life. Nothing is going to happen with it. The woman, the makabal, absorbs it and turns it into a child. You give her a little tippa and she already turns it into a, a living soul. It's a whole different Indian. So the Tzimach Tzedek says, so the Pshat is that the hay brings out what's inside the Yud. The Yud is a seminal Nekudah and the hay. The, so he looks at him and he says, your woman's attitudes about stalker just reveal what your attitudes really are, what your attitude really is. She's just helping you see what you really feel. <laughs> Atkan. In other words, <laughs> she's picking up on stuff that you're not ready to admit. <laughs> and she's just telling you back in your face what you really want and what you really don't want. So you're busy blaming your wife when your wife is only reflecting what you're really feeling. I'm not going to say that this should be applied to every single uh, couple that comes into therapy to visit it. <laughs> it's not fair. It's certainly not fair to a lot of husbands. But it's a very, very powerful truth and is so often <laughs> real. And it's not it's visible. And look at my wife. Look at my Her whole mitzvah, this whole mitzvah was created by you. <laughs> Just you never had the courage to look at it. She's showing you, what you what's really going on. She's the hay of the yud. So when you, when you say he's talking about Rachel and Sarah and Rivka, and then you tell me that the others is, is, is Hayafa Banashim. That's the Vart. The Vart is that they brought out the Yoifi of the others. The He brings out the Yud. I'll call upon him. So this is the life of the Avis. For we in the scalos a gimel kav and Avraham avedas be kav a chesed yitzchak be kav a gvura Yaakov b'chir Avis who kav a mamutzah toyda yoshev a halim. She calls it nichlo binyan yaf a banosh. We explained before the whole union of Yoifi is the symmetry, the integration of the three pillars of the world, the tripod of the world. Toyda avoid the gemilas chasadim. That's the life of Avraham Yitzchak and Yaakov. Avraham is the life of gemilas chasadim love. Yitzchak is the life of avoida. Yitzchak is the kav a gvura yira. And Yaakov is the Kav HaTorah, the Bechira of is the choicest of the others. Is the Kav HaMamutza, the middle Kav, the synthesizer, Torah. Yoshev Yehollam, he sits in the tents. 
And that's what Hayafa Banasha means. There's a beauty in the mitzvahs. Mitzvahs Asim, mitzvahs Lysas. So that's the lifespan of the Avas. So it's Arur Haman, Baruch Mardechai, because it's mitzvahs Asim, mitzvahs Lysas, and Hayafa Banasha, all the three Avas. Dalid, Om, Nam Yashne Maimed Matzav, Shalzan Nemanim, Lo Yisaydi, Lo Hayafa Banasha. Then there comes a state in life where you don't know your own beauty. You don't have das. You don't have true visceral awareness of the Yafa Banashem. The Yafa Banashem is not aware of herself. And therefore, it's affected in her behavior as well. And when we say her, it's not her, it's him as well. Yafa Banashem is a metaphor for a certain state of living. This is the situation we say in Musaf. The state of exile that came as a result of our own alienation from our true self. In other words, we're missing either, to, so a person is missing either Toya or a person is missing in Mara, or a person is missing in both. And this creates the exile, and not just geographical exile, spiritual exile. In other words, I don't, I'm not in touch with the Yafei Toyer or the Yafei Mara. So the person becomes exiled from themselves. And then we have not the name of Rachel, but the name of Esther. On this the Gemara says in Chul and Kuflam Etes, what's the source of Esther in Torah? The Pasuk in Vayelech. I will conceal my face on that day. Haster Aster Pana. What's Prat Haster Aster Pana? My face is not manifested. Certainly the beauty of the face is not manifested. The whole face is in a state of concealment. In other words, the person's own power and beauty is in jail. It's confined. It's locked up. And I don't even know where the keys are. I may not even know that something is locked up. It's so locked up that I don't even know it's locked up. Haster Aster. The Baal Shem Tov said, what's Haster Aster twice? The Hester is Behester. Baal Shem Tov Zavart. The Hest. Why twice? I know what Aster means. Conceal. What the conceal, conceal? What's me? It's like a two, two, two games of hide and seek. So the Baal Shem Tov said, Concealed is Nishtaz Gefelech. The concealment is concealed. If I have concealment, but there's a sign, here is the concealed secret. <laughs> or here's an arrow. Go there to find the secret. Okay, it's not such a secret. The secret is secretive, meaning I don't even know that there's a concealment, so I don't have what to look for. There's no reference point. Nothing was lost. If something was lost, so there's a mitzvah, if, if the concealment is concealed, it means I don't know that there's a concealment. In other words, I call the concealment revelation. I call sickness health. I call dysfunctionality functionality. I call paganism godliness. I call stupidity wisdom. And I call kugel chasidus. So now there's nothing to be concealed. Well, there's a beautiful, delicious piece of kugel. Nacha Yerushalmi kugel. So it's a chasidus, it's Yerushalmi chasidus. Talmud Yerushalmi. And there's oil too. So you have shemen, metchachma, metchanaka, all the good things. Shuman, fat. The point is, that's how Neuchi has to ask. There's concealment, and then there's, I don't even know there's a concealment. Sometimes a person is in a state where all the things that are concealed are so well concealed, you don't even have an inkling that there's something concealed. It takes a huge wake-up call or different help till the person even realize. We talk here a lot about coping mechanisms, Right? If I know that I have coping mechanisms, it's already a dia samach lechatsi trupa. If I don't even know there are coping mechanisms, this is the way to live. It's a perfect way to live. I, my whole life, is one big coping mechanism. I'm completely, disreg completely not in touch with myself. <laughs> this is it. I don't know anything else. Why? This is what I'm used to. This is my comfort zone. This helped me survive. I can't, I can't blame the person. I can't judge the person. That's what I'm saying. Esther is in So Esther is in a state. I don't even access, I don't have access to that Yafa Banosh. It's explained. Shabez Aloshain is Hastir Astir. Is Hey Sayser, Va Alif Sayser, Kenegad Bezayon, the Yafas Torah, the Yafas Mara. 
Haster, Haster, you realize he doesn't say twice Haster or twice Aster. He says Haster and Aster. So one is Heisaser and one is Aleph Saser. <laughs> That's the, the contrast to Yefei Toya Yefei Mara. The opposite of Rachel is Esther on two levels. Heisaser and Aleph Saser. There's the Hay concealed and the Aleph concealed. Based on what we explained with Yefas Toya Yefas Mara, you'll see the opposite, the contrast. The Hay concealed is one level, Haster, and then there's something even worse or something deeper. Not Aster, the Aleph is concealed. And the difference is the hinein is by your lel siv gimel shekadei shavei that a machmet to assess in shoshar shem moisi is vavke to your bishleimos shu inyan yefei ter tzarachlis hamshachem ubchinas hamoichin inyan ois bainenos shu inyan ois heish b'shem Hashem. In order for the avoid and the ram machmet to assess which are connected to vavke, for it to be with perfection, which is yefei toyar, I need a connection with the mind, with the moichin, with the is bainenos. When a person has a state of consciousness, regulation in their mind, there could be his scholarless integration in the Midas, in the Vavke, which is what Mitzvah Sesi represent. My relationship with everything in life coming through Vavke, coming through the Midas. His Bainanus Meichen, Bina is the hay of Shema Avaya. We said there's Yud and there's Hey, Yud is Chachman, Hey is Bina. Bina is his Bainanus. The word Bina comes from, his Bainanus is from the word Bina, Lahavin. Like we say in the morning, we say, Bili Beinu Bina, Lahavin, Lahaske, Lishmaya, Lilma, the Lalamid, Lishma, Velasas, in the Bracha Avas Oilam before Kriyashma or Averaba and the Nusachashkenaz. So for there to be a Fei Toyar, you need the Hay functioning well. In simple English, it would mean I'm not in trigger mode. My brain is in a place of awareness. In neuroscience, it's called. I'm in my prefrontal cortex. That's the part of the brain, the highest part of the brain, where there's long-term thinking, where there's regulation, where there's a sense of morality, there's empathy, there's realizing the pros and the cons, there's delaying gratification. All these thoughts come from the place, in the prefrontal, where there's attunement, regulation. Then the middis have a parent, because the parent is an adult, the parent is not a baby. If children are, are, are acting out, and the parents are in chaos inside of them. They're the babies. So they can't help the children because they are the children that still need help. That's why the biggest avoid of chinuch is not educating your children. It's educating yourself. Much harder. It's easier for me to tell my child what to do or what not to do. But that's more superficial. The real avoid of chinuch is going into me <laughs> and regulating myself so that there's a presence that's calming, that can create safety in the emotions. And then they could let go. Everybody's with me? So in, in Lashon of Chassidus, this is bringing in the hay, which is Bina, his Bainanus, to help with the Vavke. The Yud and the hay come before the Vavke. Yud and hay are the parents. Vav and hay are the children. That's like Meichen and Midas, awareness and emotions. So that's for the Mach Mitzvah's essay. That's your fate Toyar. You want beauty in Toyar, which are the Eivarim, the Ramach Mitzvah Sese, so you have the Hey. Omnam Kashra Avoide, but Ramach Mitzvah Sese, Yishaloi Kediboi, Azai Kutshebrichu, Salik Leela. Hainu She Kutshebrichu, Shubchinez Zain Yenamidis, Salik Leela, Lubchinez Bina, Shazo, Hey, Seser, Hester, Shawin Yenasilik, Lubchinez Sabina, Ois Hey. When the Avoide in the Ramach Mitzvah Sese is not the way it's supposed to be. So the Zoya has an expression, Kutshebrichu, Salik Leela. Kutshebrichu, which represents the Midis, Za. Kutshebrichu. Salik Leila ascends upward, which means hey, say sir, haster, anoichi, haster, haster, hey, say sir, which means the middis have a siluk to pchinas habina, to the ois hey, and now there's a level of concealment. There's no connection to the visceral experience of the person. I'm not embodied anymore. There's ideas, and they remain concealed in the mind. They don't connect to the person's emotions and the person's body. That's Haster. The Kashra Abgam, who Gambisha summits with Slaces, as I could shabri who solic loidak laela, ela laela, ula ela, Shazo Aleph say, said Aleph Astir, show us silic lubchinus Aleph, Kester Mokra Moichen. When the blemish is also in Shasaloises, in other words, it's not just I'm missing in things I do, but in what I don't do. In other words, the person gets entrenched in toxic stuff. 
Now, Kuchabrichu Salik La'ela Ula twice. What's La'ela Ula Ela? Above and above. Like we say in Kaddish by Ne'ila. La'ela Ula Ela. So the Zoya says, Kuchabrichu Salik La'ela Ula Ela. La'ela is from Middas to Moichin. La'ela Ula Ela is from Moichin to Keser. That's the superconscious. Now, even my Moichin are completely out of sync. They're not connected. There's no flow. And that's Aleph Seser. Not hey say but Aleph. Aleph is the source. It's higher than the hey. It's higher than Meichen. Aleph is connected to Kesser. Aleph. Aleph means the ruler. Aleph. Aluf. And Aleph is the first letter of the Aleph base. It's a Siddhuk Lepchinas Aleph Makra Meichen. So Vanoichi Haster. Haster is connected to Yifas Toyar with Yifas Mara. There's no Yifas Toyar because Haster. There's no Yifas Mara because Aster. And that's the contrast of Esther versus Rachel. This represents what Golos is. Golos in the Jewish people generally and in each individual. That elikus, godliness, our own godliness is concealed, it's eclipsed. The avoid of a person is missing. There's some missing in the avoid of a person. The opposite of Hayafa Banasha. The opposite of Rachel, which is Yifas Torah or Yifas Mara. And this is the idea of concealment. That's what the Gemara says about Esther. That naturally, you looked at her, there was a greenishness, there was a yellowishness. Not like Rachel. It was a Chiddush that Achashvedish was so taken. Why is the Gemara telling this to us? Because it's not about the, we're not talking about the physical properties here so much. We're talking as a metaphor for the spiritual state that the Hayafe Banashim is not coming out. What's being taken over is a different situation. Anoichi Haster Haster. Your divinity, I don't have, my divinity I don't have access to. It's concealed. And the concealment itself is concealed. Why? Because when it goes to hey, at least I can know about the concealment. When it goes back to Aleph, now it's in the subconscious. I don't even know about the concealment. So that's the, the title of the Baal Shem Tev, Hasta, Hasta, and the title here in the Maimon, it's connected. When it goes up to Hey, I could at least know that there's a concealment because my Moichen still are intact. When it goes up to Aleph, now I don't even know. What this means is in a practical, situa- in a practical, in a practical life of a person, it's what we said before, there's a situation where my emotions are... You know, maybe wreaking havoc inside of me. But there is a hey, there is a level of awareness that could still be intact. So the Hester is not completely Behester. I may have difficulty in translating and embodying and connecting. But the Seser is to the Bechina of hey. The Midas are concealed in the hey. It's hard for me to bring them out. The Hizbainanus, usually through Hizbainanus, through Moichen, I can affect the Midas. Here it's a Matzav with the Ramach Mitzvah are missing, so Kuchabrichu Salik La'ela. So now there's a Siluk to the place of Bina, and it's, there's no connection from there. But then there's Kuchabrichu Salik La'ela, Ula Ela, which means even the Moichen go up. So now I have to go into a deeper, deeper place which is not conscious inside of me. Those are the primal drives, like we spoke before. Zobatik Achid Vitalia. So I don't have not yifas toya, and not even and not yifas mada, not even yifas toya. Mm-hmm. Depends which way you want to see it, and that's what that's what Esther represents. On this, he says, <laughs> But the pasuk says, if you don't know hayafa banoshim, then this is what you should do. In other words, there's advice. It's not like we say, okay, it's over. I messed up. There's no such a thing. This is what to do. The Eitzah for this is, this is where we come. What's called Tshuva and the whole idea of what Mesidus Nefesh means. What real Mesidus Nefesh means. Tonight, 
this was actually the real state of the Jewish people during the time of Purim. What happened? All the Jews stood with Mesidus Nefesh, with a state of complete dedication and commitment for an entire year. Because if you remember the story, Haman made the Gzeira on Yud Gimel Nisan. The decree was that in a year from now, the 13th of Adar, all Jews should be killed in one day. When the Jewish people found out about the Gzeda, there was still a year left. And even when Haman was killed, the Gzeda was still there. And even when Achashverosh gave them permission for self-defense, which was a few months later, of Gimel Sivan, still the Gzeda was never annulled. You couldn't annul the decree. So for a whole year, the Jews were waiting for the day, standing in anticipation. There was a Gzeda on the Jewish people that everyone, Chas Shalom, was going to be killed. And the Gzeda was Ladeg Ula Abed Eskol HaYehudim, every Jew. Including those who went to the meal of Achashverosh and those who enjoyed the meal and those who bowed down to the Tzalem. And the Altarebbe has a lotion that the whole year lay also b'levechad ben machsheves chutz chas v'shalom. The Altarebbe says in Tehidah that the Gzeda was on Yehudim. If a Jew would say, I'm not a Yehudi anymore, you're fine, you're potter. And still a whole year, nobody had a machsheves chutz. Nobody even had a thought of betraying their Judaism. What happened? From one extreme to another extreme. It says, This state of connection of Mesidus Nefesh, Bepoyal, never existed before that by the Jewish people, Mitzah themselves. The Bezidil. Never existed by the Jewish people, Mitzah themselves. Which means, Bisarusa de Lasata, from their own arousal, they never had this. And he explains, the Afshikaba Matan Tayra, Yinshal Mesidus Nefesh, Kamayman as Al Koldibu Vadibu Parchanish Mason, had a Inyan Zayi Mitzada Dibur, Hainu Mesad de Sarusa de La Ela. By Matan Tayra, there was Mesidus Nefesh. The Gemara says in Mesechus Shabbos that on every one of the Diburim, every one of the Ten Commandments, their Neshama flew out. So he, he touches what's said, their Neshama flew out. What does it mean? It means they were in a state of Mesiris Nefesh. <laughs> Mesiris Nefesh means in a state that my, it's a moed de ketayt. We learn Parchanish Mosan. They died. God brought them back. He's saying here Parchanish Mosan means the death of ego. The death of ego, <laughs> that's a chiddish. Shekayach <laughs> Gadol. The death of ego is a gewaldike chiddush. Parchen Ishmasan means you have a relationship with your soul as it was pre-embodied in the body. In other words, before my soul came into my body, it was <laughs> what did it look like? I, could I still have a relationship with that same level of oneness in my body? That's what Parchen Ishmasan means. Usually once the soul comes into the body, 99.9% .9 of its experience is concealed. Because now the body takes over. Whoa, 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 one second. It's breakfast. Relax. Neshama leh. Breakfast. Okay. Now it's lunch. Okay, now I need some validation. Could you give me a compliment? Whatever it is. Now I need money. Now I'm afraid. Now I'm... Now, the whole different reality. And Neshama's like, oh my God, where am I living? And our whole life, we're busy negotiating between the different parts. But the Neshama in its purity, not even Shaykh. Yeah. It's not even. It's a It's a derivative of infinite consciousness. That's why when your neshama is your best friend, is a state of bliss, because it's like it's 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 a channel for infinity. By matan teda was parcha neshmasa, and they experienced the purity of the soul in its pristine glory, pre embodiment. He says that's true. But it was Mitzah de Sarusa de Leila. <laughs> there was a revelation from above, and that's what made it. That's what happened. Sometimes you have a revelation, it's higher than the Kalim, so the body can't, the Nefesh of Bahamas can't be fooled, right? It doesn't get nispal from all the blockages, and you see, boom! It's like people who experience different healing journeys know, right? You had blockages your whole life, and then. Psh, psh, one block and then suddenly you got to face things that you never faced whoa where did that happen it was always there the knowledge was there the experience was there I just had so many good blockages to eclipse it so there was a gift from above it schlepped them out from that state of, of, of imprisonment so there was 
Mesiris Nefesh means the natural state of the soul where it's completely one with its source without any chatzitz, without any separation. That's what the word Mesiris Nefesh means. We hear the word Mesiris Nefesh, it, it conjures a very negative image. Like sacrifice, uh, suppression, uh, I don't care who you are. Really, Mesiris Nefesh means the Nesham is Ibigigabin. It's, 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 it's Ibigigabin. It it's attached to what it really is. That's what it is. Chalila v'chas, we say chalila v'chas because, because we want to be in this world, that's the kavana. But sometimes it's expressed in a physical way. When a Jew goes on Mesidus Nefesh, what we call Mesidus Nefesh. But the Nekud of Mesidus Nefesh is not you die. The Nekud of Mesidus Nefesh is your ego dies. <laughs> and heaven knows that's difficult. Because ego death is death. When the ego dies, the ego doesn't say, oh, the ego is dying. The ego says, shaita, you're dying. You're dying. You're, and you're killing yourself. <laughs> I am you. I'm, I'm your, that's what ego death means. So by Batan Torah, you had Parch and Nishmas and Emes. Ego death. But it was Mitzad Yisarus of the Leila. There was, they said Nasa before Nishma. In other words, complete commitment, I'll do. And then I'll understand. I don't neither. You don't have to give me a list of everything you want. I'm in, I'm in, I'm here. Whatever you want. So Nasev and Nishma is also Mesidus Nefesh. But it came because the mountain was on their head. What's Pshat? The Alter Rebbe explains. There was such an explosion of love. It forced them into the relationship. If you see a level of love, it's like, well, you've got to be crazy to resist this. Of course you're lured into it. That's Prat Kofalem Harke Gigis. But the Rebbe the higher is the Ava. The love was so powerful, it forces you into the relationship. You have to be a Meshuggah and not to. That, but, and that's called forced. You know why it's called forced? It's called forced because it's dependent on the revelation from above. I still didn't find it in myself. The eight, kafa, we touch kafa, I force you, I'll, I'll, I'll kill you, I'll put the, put the elevator, it's like you, you invite a woman, you put her under an elevator, so if you marry me, good, if not, the elevator is coming down on your head, beautiful, I love you, kafa le marke gigas, either you accept me or the mountain is coming right on your head and it's going to be the biggest base aquarius in history, and the Jew said, okay God, we love you, what, that's Martin Taita? Do me a favor. If 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 you married, if if um, if your wife was agreed to the proposal based on this, what type of relationship do you think you have? <laughs> That's true. That's the maral, yeah, based on a medrash. That's true. The Gemara says in Shabbos that Rav says that because Kafalei Markik, this is a Maidar Rabba. Jews have an excuse for not keeping Torah because it was forced on their heads. And then Rav said, the Gemara says in Shabbos that Peches that Hashem put a mountain over the Jewish set. So Rav said, "Mikan my daughter Abelaz." That's why Jews have an excuse for the first thousand years of Jewish history. I never wanted this marriage; you forced me. And then Rav said, "It all changed by Putim. Putim, they decided to accept it willingly." And he says, that's Pshat in the Megillah. It says, Kimu v'kiblu ha-Yehudim. Kimu ma kiblu kvar. What they once accepted by force, they finally affirmed. That's Pshat v'kiblu ha-Yehudim. Eis hashe echelu lasas. What they began by Matan Teda, they finally affirmed. So the Pashtas, the way the world learns it is, by Matan Teda, we were forced. And by Putim, Rashi says, they may avas, what's the lotion? Interesting, Rashi. May avas hanes, I think. Yeah, the Gedeng Zerashi in Shabbos. I think, may Avas Hanes, the love, they saw the miracle of Purim, they, they, they reaffirmed Matan Torah. But here, the, the, the Rebbe is explaining it on a deeper level. By Matan Torah, it's not that they were forced. It's Pshat is, is a Sarusa de la Eila. Of course their soul came out by Matan Torah, because they saw God's face. <laughs> Once you see God's face, what are you going to do? <laughs> You're going to turn around. His face is on the other side too. In other words, once you see Enoid Mulvada, good luck. You know, good luck. Thank you. 
<laughs> you don't need to come to a Shia. You don't have to. <laughs> it's like, fine. That's that force. It's the deepest form of force. Yeah. The deepest form of kafa is, yeah, not with chains. That's external. The deepest form of kafa is the totality of your home at sea is, 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 is enraptured by the rapture of the, of the moment, of the revelation. So why is it called force? It's not force. Force just means that it's because of the revelation that I happen to see, but it's not really integrated inside of me. What was the Chiddush of Purim? The Chiddush of Purim is on Noichi Hasta Aster Ponai. There was no face present. There was concealment. To be a Jew meant that you're the only one who's destined for annihilation. That's what it meant to be a Jew. To be a Jew didn't mean that the sea splits, that there's ten plagues on your behalf, that all the nations are scared. To be a Jew means that you are going to be annihilated. You're the vermin of the earth. That was put him. No, now what should Jews do? It was very nice. I understand. You tzatzkin zich with me. You're in love with me. You take me out of my time. You give me ten knockers. You split us. Yeah, you got to be crazy not to be in this relationship. But now the creator is completely concealed. And what happened? It says in a whole year, not one of them wanted to go away. What happened? This is where Matan Taira took root. It took root inside of them. It's not anymore something that's a revelation from above. This is who you are. And if this is who you are, you can't not be who you are. This was the Chiddush of Purim, the first time in history. This was the first time it was not anymore God's doing. It was the Jewish people's doing. It showed that the oneness was completely integrated. This was the concealment. The concealment brought it out. The Gzeda, I they went to the party of Achashvedish yesterday, they did, because they were fooling themselves. When they saw the hatred of Haman, it reminded them the Kedusha of Am Yisrael. Tragically and amazingly, we saw it this year again, after October 7th, by many, many Jews. The last thing you would want to be now is a Jew. Why should you be a Jew, even in America? What do you need your concerts, concerts canceled? What do you need people protesting against you? What do you need people telling you at university, Hitler didn't finish the job, from the sea till the river, Palestine will be free. What do you need it for? Become a good Protestant, and you'll have a happy life. But you see, even Jews who are left, 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 left wing and decided that the left liberal agenda is their new nest and their new home. And suddenly they have such a Yisairus. <laughs> what What do your children need it for? So you'll ask him, it doesn't make sense. It's not a mathematical conclusion. He doesn't need it for his parnasa. He doesn't need it. What is it? The Nekud is as Takayid. That's his Atzmius. The Atzmius is that he's a Chelik Elekamimal. When it's poked, when you're poked on that level and you can't afford blockages anymore, the MS comes out. And when the MS comes out, that is what Mesidus Nefesh means. Mesidus Nefesh means my soul is in a state of Dvekus the way it is before embodiment in the Guf. So even in the Guf, it's the death of the blockages, of the egotistical blockages. Okay, let's finish this paragraph. When you look at the situation of the Jews, they were never in, never in such a low state. Even Pare. 
Pate wanted to kill the males, the baby males. The females? No, he's fine with the females. In other words, even the genocide was limited. You can have women. You can have girls. Pare didn't oppose that. Later, the Gemara says in Psach and Pezayin that it was a tzedakah that Hashem scattered the Jews between the nations. What's the tzedakah? So it actually says there in Psachim, so even if it's a decree on one demographic, one group, there's Jews everywhere else. But by Achashvedish, all the Jews were under his memshala because the Persian monarchy then included the entire region, 127 provinces, and the Jews were there. You didn't have Jews in Australia or in South America or in California. They were all Tachas Memshalta. So essentially this was a Gzeda, the first time in history on every single Jew, that if Haman would have succeeded, there would be not one Jew left. You never had that before. Even by Parai. So in terms of safety, in terms of uh, security, it was the lowest, lowest point of Jewish history. You know, think about it, think about it in on our times, right? All Jews under Hitler. You had 6 million Jews in America during the Holocaust. But by then you had all the Jews under Haman, under Hitler, under Achashvedish. And Haman was right under where the second man in command. So when you think about, in terms of their state of mind, it should have been the greatest yirsh, the greatest despair, the greatest alienation, the greatest running away from their Judaism. There was no refuge, there was nothing else. This is it, and everything was dark. And that was the Chiddush of Purim. There was no Isarusa de Leila. There was no revelation from above. Nobody was splitting any seas. Nobody was giving them any ten makas against... Haman wasn't getting ten makas. It was Mamash Anoichi Haster Aster. And in that space, something happened. What happened? The deepest core came out, and they said, we're Jews, and we're connected. And this is who I am. And for a whole year, they stood united in a motion of Mesides Nefesh, Mesides Nefesh Bepoyal, in a very real way, in a very visceral way. This wasn't a, some fantasy. And for a whole year, sometimes you have it a day. Everybody knows, moods change. You know, you have a excited this, but a week later, you go back to normal. Right? Israel, after October 7th, everybody was united. Today, it's already hard. I, there's a war going on, but people, you know, it's very hard to stay connected to that level of consciousness. The first few days, you saw a Jew, you wanted to kiss him and hug him. Stayed, wow, Hamas hates you just like he hates me. We're already connected. <laughs> what connects us is much deeper than what divides us. What divides us. But that's when you're, you're in that zone, in that frequency. Then you go back to regular life, right? I don't like you. I don't like your personality. You disagree with me. We don't have the same political persuasions. That's what he says. It was B'meshech Kol Kula. The Chiddush is, it went for the whole year. In other words... They remained anchored in that level of Mesides Nefesh. So this is going to be the beginning of the explanation in Avoida. What happens with the Imloi Seidi Lachay Yafa Banoshim? When you're not aware of the Yafa Banoshim, you should know that it's only on a level of Das, Loi Seidi Lach. You don't know about it. But the awareness of it is completely not defining the truth of it. So on a level of awareness, there's blocked. There's a blockage. On a level of, but when you you could take the loy seidilach and turn it into ada loy ada, the loy seidilach becomes a deeper form of a real a relationship. And that's what he's starting to explain the chiddush. What happened by Purim? By Purim, there was a new avoda that was that was created. This avoda of Mesides Nefesh, as he's going to explain more, that was the chiddush of Purim, which transforms the loy seidi into the ada loy ada, as we will see based on Hashem. Uh, the next year, continuation. Yeah. Yeah. Sadi, yeah. Standing, and then Adeloya, yeah. yeah. There's Loi Sadi that is lower than Seichel. Right, lower than and Seychel. then there's Sadi, Das, yeah. which is beautiful. Hayafa yeah. Banashem. And then there's Adeloyada. Yeah. 